a very concentrated, small and intimate group. You can dive a little deeper. In the final passages of the great book of the life of St. John of the Cross, after his final dark night of the soul, he says, when all in the house were asleep, I went forth. There's a story that was told not so long ago that when we put it together with this statement, it gives us something for us to work on over these next coming days together. And it's that story about the king whose country was always at war. He was always being invaded. So his army was ever at the ready. And it so happened that he was out again defending his boundaries. And his army was exhausted as he was when he was on his way to return to his own palace, his own central place, his kingdom. But he had to enter the forest at the edge of his domain. And at a certain point in the forest, suddenly he felt a great peace descending upon him. The fatigue that he had seemed to drop away from him. His cares and his woes just fell from him. As he advanced more and more into the forest, it deepened. A great silence came to his heart. And he suddenly realized he was in the domain of the very great saint that had his ashram at the edge of his kingdom. So as he moved deeper and deeper into that domain, he suddenly came upon a clearing. <coughs> and there in the middle of the clearing was the hut of the great saint. And around it were five trees, and under each tree there sat a monk in deep meditation. So the king entered with great reverence and bowed in front of the great saint, who came out of his meditations, opened his eyes, and greeted the king graciously. The king, after his salutations, sat down, and the saint brought out platters of fruit from the trees that were in the forest surrounding his ashram. They had conversation, and the time passed. But then the king said, it's time for me to return now with my army, who are greatly fatigued. But the saint said, wait, wait, let me invite you and your army to have repast with me. Oh, said the king, we're a great horde. How can you give and feed the horde of my army? The saint said, oh, please, please call your army here. And so the army was called. And then the saint whispered, Djibouti, Djibouti, come. And suddenly, beside the great saint, the air began to move, it became light began to dance together, 
and suddenly they formed a cow, the horns reaching up to the sky, her eyes like bright limpid pools. The saint said to the cow, here we have guests, please give to them as they want. And suddenly each member of this army had before them a plate of the most delicious food that they could individually desire. The king was amazed at this, amazed, and in his heart grew this thought, I want this cow, I want this cow. So after the repast was done, he said to the great saint, how much do you want for your cow? I'll give you half my kingdom for this cow. The saint said, you don't understand. This cow cannot be given. This cow is part of what it is that I am. But the king was adamant. <coughs> give her to me, otherwise I will take her. And so he called his army forth. But as they came forth, the saint raised his the finger, and immediately the army was turned to ashes, and the great cow disappeared back into the ether once again. The king was angry. He was furious. He did not even give any thanks to the saint. He turned tail and headed back to his kingdom with the intention of revenge. If he could not have the cow, he would take his revenge on this saint. So when the king went back, his palace. He could not rest. He paced. He was sleepless. So he left his kingdom in the care of his advisors and he sought out a famous sorcerer from whom he could learn all the tricks of the occult world. And after he'd learned and gathered all of these abilities to him, he set out back to the domain of the great saint. Now when he arrived there, the saint was sitting outside his hut in meditation position. The king challenged him and took out one of his occult weapons, a fire, and immediately put it in front of the great saint, and it set afire the hut in which the saint sat. The flames burned up the hut, singeing the dhoti, the hair of the saint, but he remained totally calm and peaceful, even though his hair was still on fire. The king was aghast. The flames had not engulfed the saint, so he sent more and more of his occult weapons. None of them had any effect, until finally, with only one power left in his pantheon, the king directed it at the saint. But the saint had his, in his hand a staff, and he held up the staff in front of him. 
and the weapon. This final powerful awkward weapon was totally deflected. But then the saint was angry and he held up his staff and he said to the king, you have disturbed my peace, so now I must kill you. But just then, the five monks who sat in meditation rose up and said to the saint, Master, do not let your peace be disturbed. And so the saint took his staff, held it in front of his body, and aligned himself. Immediately, peace descended on him once again. And he said to the king, Go in peace. And may your anger be the power that takes you to liberation. So the question that's posed to us right now, what is the relationship between those final words of St. John of the Cross when all in the house were asleep, I went forth. And this story and what it means relative to this stuff over these coming days, since we have this opportunity to have this intense This is what we're going to attempt to answer. What's the relationship between that passage when all in the house were asleep? I went forth. In this story, with the staff in alignment in front of the great saints body. Now, you already know it's been already said before, but when we were visiting Jerusalem, Gail and myself, a young man came after the storytelling. He asked me, what is your secret? And I said to him, I am the story. I am the stories. Take this story. Recognize each of its characters, its symbols, and its archetypes, the cow, the numbers. together. Let's bring together these two. See what it does for us. What it does for us. So you know that it's not possible to use our mind to try to understand this relationship. It has to be experienced. Make yourselves available to this experience this week. We have only this time together. This will not happen again. To so be available. Align yourself. And see what